Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Michael Evangelista and I will be your moderator for today. Just a few reminders that you are in listen-only mode to avoid unnecessary background noise. However, you can type in your questions anytime you want and those questions will be answered by our panelists in a Q&A segment. The recording and certificates for this webinar will be sent out in two days time. And our topic for today is about industrial application. It is an industrial application for practical consideration of low resistance testing. This is a pre-recorded webinar and it was presented by our expert from Indonesia, Sumedi. Without any further ado, let's start this webinar, Grace. Thank you for your uh, introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jumaidi. Uh, today, I will uh, uh, discuss for topic about the practical consideration of uh, low resistance uh, testing. Actually, this presentation has been uh, created by Samir Kulkani from Omega uh, US. So I will try to share uh, all information that I got from him uh, for uh, uh, our knowledge. Okay. Uh, just a yeah, uh, this is the, the agenda for today. For this presentation, I will uh, explain quick about the, what is the low resistance and then uh, why uh, to measure low resistance. And also we'll talk about the measurement method, test recommendation and some challenges and also uh, application and product portfolio. And at the end, we will talk about the summary of uh, this uh, presentation. So let's begin. Uh, what is a uh, low resistance? Uh, low resistance is uh, a resistance value typically uh, below one ohm. So as long as the the resistance value uh, less than or below one ohm, it can be considered as a low resistance. Uh, now, where do we find this uh, of low resistance values? Uh, so one of the key industry there are so many applications for example uh in the just one in the component manufacturing like uh, manufacture of uh, motors or cables or maybe switch gears all connection does uh, components is require a low resistant value and also if you're moving to the uh, you have battery system, you have battery center, like a battery bank, they are connected to the UPS system. You also need the low resistance failure be between each uh, intercell of the, of the battery bank. And other application on the wind turbine, uh, several steps in manufacturing and commissioning process of the wind turbine also is required to have low resistance uh, failure. So, and many more, uh, the application that require a low resistance failure. So this is uh, where we can find uh, this, uh, this application. Okay. And this is the reason why we do measurement of the low resistance. At the center of the screen, I think you, you, you can uh, look at some of the factors that can affect the resistance value. This moment. My hot spots not good. Okay, this one. This one. This is the sum uh, effect uh, on the resistance value. You can see from the first one is the contact uh, uh, degradation. The contact degradation suppose the amount of surface area of the contact is not sufficient that going to delete the high resistance value. And second is you have the chemical corrosion. For example, if you have battery that uh, somehow maybe there is uh, some leaking uh, on the uh, chemical uh, component, like uh, maybe the the EQ leaking through the exposed and to the post, 
also it can lead to the semicolon correction. And temperature also uh, give effect to the low resistance measurement. As we know, the, the resistance is very depending on the temperature. In example, if you have the circuit breaker with the maybe overload, uh, has been overload, of course, automatically the temperature on the contact will be changed. And when the temperature changes, the resistance or low resistance value also will, will change automatically. And next is the for two example of loss of torsion vibration also can affect to the to the low resistance failure. Uh, let's say you have a, a motors that uh, couple a bit of some pump uh, because of vibration, maybe the, the 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 transfer from pump to the motor can have a, some loose connection. Because loose, you can have a loose torsion on the connection between each other. So from this loose can lead to the resistance failure not low anymore. So now in outside the ring, uh, you can see some key effect of no having a low resistance. So what happened if you don't have a low a low resistance? We start from the first one is increase the resistance of the uh, fault fit. If you have the like a grounding system in the industry or power plant or maybe power grid, uh, normally you have grounding system is designed to specifically to ensure safety for operator or personnel and equipment. So if that any fault will be flow to the fault uh, pet. So if there is a not good resistance, I mean, if the resistance in the fault pad is not low anymore, uh, probably uh, they will have a, a bad effect to the the operator or equipment. Maybe can can uh, can endangering the equipment and sometimes personnel. Yeah, and then hotspot. Hotspot because the contact degradation, because the contact degradation not enough surface area, you have hotspot generated by your equipment. Loss of efficiency is that can happen because changes of the temperature. And then now you not be able to conduct as much electricity as good before because the, you have loss of efficiency. And um, for the extreme cases where is a uh, high enough resistance failure is going to lead to the cycle heating and that heating maybe will damage the contact or maybe any surrounding uh, insulation. And that is basically not the favor uh, situation that we want to be. And uh, lower system failure that you measure, you can train your time. And you can if you see unacceptable changing or increasing the, the resistance value, you can have your maintenance group coming and perform work. So you can draft your maintenance strategy in predictive uh, and you have more control on this situation. So this is the, the reason actually, why do measure low resistance? Let's uh, look at uh, to the next slide. We'll talk about the measurement methods. So the first one is two wire method. This is two wire method. This method generally is uh, to measure resistance failure between uh, 10 ohm to up to 10 mega ohm. And typically you can use the multimeter as you see here to make this a measurement and that is used for general assessment. Uh, for any on any circuit, Some, sometimes you also call this a, a continuity reading with this method. And it is important to understand here that the the, the failure that you measure using two wire method uh, will include to the resistance of lead wire and contact uh, of probe resistance. 
So this is why it's difficult to get the measurement uh, less than 10, 10, uh, 10 ohm. And why this is very important? Because you want to measure a low resistance, the two wire method may not be the best because it has a little wire resistance plus and contact uh, proper resistance. Now, in example, if you measure, let's say you, you measure resistance value 100 ohm, if a lead resistance and contact uh, prop in totally around uh, 10 milliohm, the 10 milliohm value may not significant enough to affect your final reading 100 ohm. However, in the lower system uh, spectrum of uh, the resistance value, that uh, 10, 10 milliohm may completely uh, secure the, the reading that you try to get. So the next method is, uh, if you see it on the right screen, uh, there are there is a three wire method. This typically is used for very high resistance failure that will be measured in the mega ohm. And this method is used for what we call it uh, insulation resistant uh, testing. Yeah, this is mostly uh, we use this for the insulation resistant testing with the three wire method. Although the insulation testing can be performed by two wire, it's very important to understand uh, to to use the lead uh, three wire. At, uh, we call it uh, like a guard guard lead. So in different type of surface contamination, and that contamination can guard it and exclude from your uh, resistance measurement. And the last method that we know is uh, the four wire method. This method is uh, used when we try to measure uh, low resistance or the failure resistance below 10 ohm. And the key as aspect of this uh, method is we use two current probe and two potential probe and this eliminate uh, any error due to lead and contact uh, resistance. So we want to eliminate any uh, resistance measurement other than the, the test specimen. So you can look at the, the picture on the right screen. Uh, there are uh, two current uh, probe, C1 and C2. And in between the current probe, there are uh, two potential probe, uh, P1 and P2. Let's understand how to, uh, for wire uh, method work. How does it work? Uh, you can see this is the, the cube diagram of the lower system measurement. I will make uh, this uh, spotlight. Okay. So on the top, you have the constant. This is the constant, uh, sorry, this one. This is the constant uh, current DC source uh, connect to the, the test specimen, C1 and, and C2. And then you can see also uh, below the contact current DC source, there is a measuring, measuring circuit with digital display based on the ohm low. And the below part is the DC, DC fog meter that's going to measure voltage drop of this measurement. Now, when you understand what is the voltage drop, is the uh, the the failure when you current injected and the voltage drop measure, then the the resistance will be calculated by by the ohm low. Uh, so here. Actually, this measurement is measure the voltage drop and calculate the, calculate the, the resistance value. Okay. This is the, uh, if you know now, now you understand that there is, there are different methods of measuring resistance and now 
we, we are using for wires method. So in that we know it is important to decouple of the current probe. We need to decouple the current probe and the potential probe. How do we place the probe and leads, leads correctly? There is also some recommendation to do that. As you can see at the right uh, side of the screen, this is the, the checklist, uh, green checklist uh, indication. You can see here uh, the current probe with the letter C and the potential probe with the letter P must be connected like this. So the, this, the current probe is above the potential probe. That because you don't want to measure the voltage is effective by the current injection. If you connect like this with the cross, red cross indication, wrong, uh, wrong uh, position of the probe, this is obviously obviously a wrong method because what happened in this? Uh, actually, the probe, probe uh, potential probe will measure the the resistance on the current probe so maybe you will get the in uh inaccurate result because the voltage drop also measure the the, the resistance on the current probe and actually there are uh, some uh method to, to, to place your uh, probe. The ideal uh, method is the, the current connection should be above the potential measurement. And also the, you can combine the current and potential probe like this uh, uh, picture, uh, where is the, the current and potential probe will be placed in the same in class in closer C1 in P1. And also P2 and C2 will be placed in the one uh, enclosure. But actually, there is a separate uh, terminal. C1 and P1 is separately. If you see, this is only the, the cable. They have the uh, in one cable, but input and output has a two uh, uh, termination. So on this uh, method, usually you can see the, the, the one of the indication, either P or C, mostly uh, P indication on the, on the terminal. So if you know the, where is the P uh, for potential probe, you can define and you need to put the, the position of this terminal, the C or current probe is above the potential probe. And also, there is a separate current and potential probe. You can use this method to place the current and potential probe like this on the other application. Uh, we can say this is the, the best uh, position of probe and the best application to measure the low resistance uh, measurement, actually. Okay. Uh, and also there is a connection the place a proper placement like this when measurement points are close to each other so on that situation you can use the kelvin clamp or c clamp connector that actually uh, the current and potential prop are 180 degrees apart this is 180 parts so this may, uh, method also not influence to the to the measurement also you will get you will get the the accurate measurement with this method uh, okay so now we understand how to place or at least understand deeper how to place the the prop the position of prop is really crucial to get accurate low resistance Remember, the current probe, it should be outside of the potential probe. You need to follow this uh, 
this uh, recommendation. This position also allows for test current to flow with more uniform uh, current density. In case if this method is not low, can cause the result of resistance failure, sometimes it's included with the resistance of probe or any other resistance, maybe will be measured. And then you will not get the accurate measurement anymore. So based on the ASTM standard B193 that uh, talk and give you information about the guideline, how does the measurement can be made to establish uh, the uniform current density. So this is the standards very useful to, to understand uh, about the, how to place your probe and to how to get the uniform current density when you want to, to do a low resistance measurement. This is the some information that you will find in the JET standard, the HTM standard, uh, to, to define the uniform current density. The first one is if you have the uh, wire or maybe the, the, the test specimen is wire type, with a cylinder cylindrical, uh, cylindrical. Uh, you need to make uh, the potential and current leads should be separated by distance at least 1.5 uh, time of circumference. You can see on the right side of screen, if the test specimen like this, uh, cycle wire or cable, you need to put the position of the current and potential probe at least 1.5 uh, circumference, where is the circumference is uh, has a formula 2 multiple P by uh, R. And the second way, if you have the bar uh, space specimen or rectangular, there is that uh, the potential and current it should be separated by distance of at least three times width of the sample. In example, if you see the, the right uh, picture, if the white is symbolic with W and the distance between current prop and the potential prop is at least minimum three multiple W. This is minimum to get the uniform current uh, density. This is the one of the recommendation from that standard. And look at some industry standard talk about the lower system testing. Not only STM standard B193, they're talking about the method for resistivity of the electrical conductor material. But if you see the IEEE standard, uh, point C37.0, Zero 09. It will talk about the test procedures for AC high voltage circuit breaker rates on a symmetrical current basis. Whereas you can find a minimum test current for testing is 100 M DC, and but not greater than uh, than rated of the test specimen. This uh standard is mostly very useful if you want to test the the circuit breaker because this is the, the, the this is the special for the circuit breaker uh, uh, standard and difference with the ic standard ic 62271 does 100 uh explain about the alternating current circuit breakers also same talking about the circuit breaker standard and talking about the test current, but here the test current at least must higher than 50 M DC, but same, not exceed the rated of the, the, the circuit breaker itself. So both standards uh, have a different uh, minimum uh, current. And the last standard, maybe for your reference, is NITA. 
talking about the acceptance testing and maintenance testing specification. Where is uh, here? Uh, the standard talk about the comparing your measurement with other paces or similar connection. And those comparisons should not exceed or should not more than 50% difference. So in example, if you have the measurement on pace A, 100 micro ohm. So with the same connection, you can compare to the pace B or pace C, but the measurement, the, the load system value should not uh, more than 50%. It means uh, should be not less than 50 micro ohm. If you have the if you have different more than 50 micro ohms, then you need to do investigation. Let's go into the modes of operation. Actually, many equipment has uh, uh, have a uh, mode mode of the operation. I will try to explain one by one. Uh, the first one is manual mode. On the manual mode. Uh, actually, the current apply in the two direction, forward and reverse direction. And then, uh, after calculate the resistance on each direction, the value shown on the screen will be average value. So average value between forward direction, forward current, current, and reverse current. So in this uh, method. Is on this mode, uh, current and potential leads to be connected. So before you do measurement, you need to make sure connection of the current and potential. After that, you can press the test button to run the testing. Why do we make a B uh, directional measurement? Actually, this is this method is B directional measurement means both side direction actually this this measurement to eliminate the junction electromagnetic force that generated due to the similar metals so different different metal like aluminium copper copper will generate electromagnetic force so this is to eliminate junction electromagnetic force uh, to get a more accurate measurement And the second mode is automatic mode. On this mode, uh, the testing will be start as soon as the current and potential leads make contact or connected. Uh, and also same with the normal mode, the current will flow with the two direction. This is why we call B-directional measurement. The current also forward and reverse. But the difference with the normal, the measurement will be automatic. So when you connect, in example, if you want to do measurement on the low uh, on the bus bar, you just need to to connect uh, the current probe to the end of the bus bar, and then you can connect the potential probe to its uh, termination on long around around the that bus bar. As long as you connect the potential prof, the measurement will be initiated. And when you reconnect, when you disconnect the potential, measurement will be stopped. And when you do reconnect it to the other uh, termination, and then will be will will uh, measure again the the low resistance value. The next mode is automatic unidirectional mode, where is the current apply only in one direction. So on this will be only one direction. You can see on the arrow key here, uh, auto with the arrow key to the right. The good thing, the, the, the advantage of this mode is can speed up measurement, uh, especially if you want to test uh, intercell on the battery bank, this very good application. Yeah, this mode uh, can be used to, to measure the lower resistance value in the intercell connection in the battery bank. So you just connect to the intercell uh, post. 
And other example, you can use this mode. Sorry, maybe internet, my internet. So the other example, this mode very. Okay, I have problem with the internet. Okay, this mode very other application is to measure the 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 test specimen. That has a and and uh, on this mode on this mode actually uh, we do repeated measurement every three seconds. So as long as you connect the current and potential leads, and then you need to you need to press the the test button, and this also continuous monitoring. So you can test the test specimen continuously. Yeah, you can this continuously. Uh, for some cases, they need to do this testing until the the test specimen. Damage, just to see the, how long uh, the equipment can withstand again the, the current. And uh, yeah, I think this is the space for the the mode of the the continuous mode. And also maybe some some operator some customer they prefer to do testing with the one minute long. So if they need the testing continuously for one minute, they can use this mode to see the changing of the low resistance value on the test specimen. And the last mode is uh, inductive, inductive mode. So on the in the inductive mode, actually the the current will flow unidirectional. So I mean unidirectional current pass through a test specimen continuously, like a small motors, maybe a small instrument a transformer with the inductive load. You can use this mode to measure low resistance value. Uh, on this on this uh, mode, uh, normally we test uh, something has a like inductive inductive uh, component inside because this we need to make sure the there is no no more uh, voltage uh, stay on the on the lead. Yeah, on this mode, repetitive measurement taken until true value, uh, after you get the true value. Normally after voltage stabilization. And LED lamp will flash at the end. After you finish this, uh, using this mode, the LED lamp will flash to indicate there is need to uh, discharge some uh, store energy because you know the the inductive load nature will store amount energy and after that you need to discharge the energy for the safety reason otherwise uh, you it will be dangerous for the op operator when they try to disconnect the, the the lead so and the low resistance measurement is normally almost made on the out of surface or de-energized 
So testing instruments will have the circuit to detect uh, the floating focus on the test object. And the equipment should also should have the uh, interrupt test when there is a floating voltage on the circuit. Because high floating voltage, voltage could be hazardous to the user, operator, and instrument. And voltage many magnitude to be detected uh, can depend on the application. An example, uh, if you test with char, or maybe on the lab application for the some uh, PCB, it will be different. And inductive load have special requirement to discharge store energy during during measurement. So this is why you need to choose the. Normally this this mode has a special uh, function to discharge uh, energy after you do testing. To for the safety reason. Okay, still continue to continue to the safety uh, uh, when you measure the of the inductive load. The inductive load is important to be handled with the safety instrument because instrument is designed specifically to test uh, some inductive load like a like a power transformer because there is some inductor have a special uh, high voltage power level at the beginning at the beginning. Uh, testing, there is a special high voltage power. This high voltage level allow the the winding. In example, if you test the transformer to saturate, and after the transformer saturate, then the instrument will switch to the lower constant current. Uh, to the lower constant current mode. To measure the the resistance of the winding of the the transformer itself. So if this not correctly performed, the lateral voltage can be present at the disconnection. So dedicated test instrument with this feature should be available uh, for testing inductive uh, inductive load. Now let's move on to the challenges. The some challenges like a uh, uh, lead connection. Uh, the lead resistance that used for measurement has a resistance value. Of course, there is also has a resistance value on the lead that uh, can limit the maximum current uh, from measurement. You know the, the the basic principle of the current will flowing to the to the cable, but will be affect to the depend on the size of the cable, how long it the cable. So if the cable uh, short, then also the bigger diameter it will push the current uh, as maximum but in case if you have the example if you have the problem on the your lead maybe any sort this can lead to inability the tester to push the current to the test specimen and also can affect the to the test current magnitude the magnetic current may be uh, will not uh, same as you expected. And if you're measuring, uh, let's say bus bar, if uh, the connection are not secure, the resistance in this in the instrument will will see maybe like a high uh, high resistance because not be able to push the current from tester, and it, this will contribute to the low signal to noise noise ratio. This is one of the challenge. Uh, how to to choose the leads, and the next is the the challenge of the external influences. Uh, you have the electrical field that can be generated on your test specimen that it can reduce the sensitivity and the produce unstable reading because the electrical field on the environment. This is why uh, we need to find the, the best way to, to eliminate this. The one of the uh, solution is try to find the noise immunity of the human higher as possible. The next factor is temperature. 
we know that conductor resistance is affected by by temperature so means it is the temperature dependent uh, and also will be different if based on the the test uh, material material uh, material uh, specification this this is why important temperature is documented because after you documented the, the the temperature data and then you can correct it the measurement by by the instrument step and software so this very important you take note the the temperature when you do to testing because it can be corrected by the software to make to get the 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 result can be comparable otherwise you cannot compare the the previous measurement with the uh, present measurement because maybe the result is quite a big different with different temperature when you did the testing this is also the challenge electrical field and the temperature and thermal electromagnetic force also one of the challenge from the external influences the thermal electromechanical force are very small voltage in in micro micro fold uh, micro fold range that can produce due to temperature variation across the resistance so this is depend on the temperature also uh, how do we can eliminate this uh, external influence the thermal emfs the one solution is with uh, using bidirectional measurement that we explained before the bidirectional measurement can eliminate this uh, thermal emf's uh, influence the next is the contamination of the contact like in example in the on the cb foreign material can be load in the contact and this will affect to the total of the surface that available to the conduct electricity because the surface is lower then the resistance value will be increased so the increasing test current magnitude and repeating test should get contact surface free of the contamination so the con contamination of the contact also can uh, have a effect this is we have the challenge how to eliminate this And I think this is the last challenge, the external influence challenge from the noise and industrial, industrial current. When you have ripple current and static voltage in the adjacent high noise, uh, high noise environment, they can affect accuracy and the result in the erroneous reading. It's very critical to understand that voltage that be measured using the potential lead uh, that voltage should be greater than the background noise. So remember, the voltage should be greater than background noise. Otherwise, the measurement will be inaccurate. Uh, you can see it on the right screen here. Uh, in example, uh, measuring measuring of the resistance is of 50 micro ohm, and you can test with the 1 amp you will get the voltage um, drop is around about uh, maybe 50 microvolt to get the 50 micro ohm when you test with the 10 m the voltage drop will be measured about uh, maybe 500 microvolt so which one is uh, the best depend on the background noise that you have on the side if you have background noise noise maybe 100 microvolt the 1 m measurement with this voltage drop measurement will have effect to the measurement because the background noise higher than the voltage drop measurement we need to avoid this condition this is one of reason why we need to use the higher current sometimes because we need to get the higher uh, uh, voltage drop to make it the the voltage measurement is higher than a background noise you also can test with the 600 m 
to get the more uh, faulty drop. But please uh, keep in your mind. Uh, even we can increase the the test current, but we need to be careful because uh, still need to follow the the previous uh, standard. The, the the test currents not exceed the rating of the test specimen. So you can inject current higher as possible, but still should be less than of the rating of the test specimen. This is the very important to to remember. Okay, I will. Now, I think, uh, yeah, this is the some low resistant tester that uh, we have. We have the 10M family. We have the LRO 10, 10X, 10XD, 10XDX. Where is uh, the output, the test current is 10M. And for the inductive, inductive load, we have the MTO family, uh, MWA, and Trex. If you need the higher, high, higher current, we have the DLRO 200 and 600 and also mom 200 we honor with the high noise immunity you can also use the we 200 or 600 depend on the, the application so i let's try to talk uh quickly about those uh, equipment uh, they are all 10 XD and the 10 XDX is has a test current from 100 micro ohm to 10 m with range uh, resistance range is 0 0.1 micro ohm to 2500 ohm. This device has a five test mode and auto state start on contact means has featured for automatic uh, mode and also inductive mode for testing the inductive load. This device also have a manual range select uh, and has a uh, the power range. There are uh, 0 0.25 watt and 25 watt. This is depend on the test specimen that you want to test. Sometimes we cannot use the same power to test the all equipment. So I think not many equipment has this uh, capability where it consists to range of the power. For example, if you want to test the PCB, maybe you, you don't need to the higher power, but if you need to test the circuit breaker, sometimes you need the, the, the higher power. 100, 100 millivolt immunity, so again, the noise background, I mean, no, uh, noise environment, and 600 volt protected with the IP54 rating, with the AC source or battery operation. And also has a memory capability if you choose the DLRO 10 uh, XD. X and the R100, uh, we can inject up to 100 m with the resistance range 0 0.1 micro amp to 1999 ohm. And this equipment has the dual ground method for set test and provides smooth DC output and with a ramp up for circuit breaker testing. So, the one of the sub advantages. If you have the smooth DC, this is to avoid the the false trip on the maybe your system. High noise immunity for stable reading uh, with the uh, this unit also lightweight with 100 m battery power unit for the portability. Uh, IP54, CAT4, 600 volt AC and 500 volt DC for safe operation. Has feature to save, download and delete uh, result with the 100x x variant and also can be remote operation with bluetooth and asset result uh, with the 100x variant if you need more current you can use the dro h200 up to 240m with ranging ranging resistance range 0 0.1 micro ohm to 1000 ohm also has a capability for the audible pass fail testing again the adjustable limit uh, battery supply also have dual ground method uh, comply with IC and IC IEEE and IC standard and include with the power DB light 
for data management and collection. The different thing between this equipment with the other is we cannot adjust the, the current. Uh, we just can set the current minimum 50 or 100 amp, but this device we inject uh, and guaranteed will be higher than 100, 100 amp based on the IC or NC standard. We honor 200 and 600 is very a good uh, product for the application in the high noise environment, like in the 500 kV system, uh, because this is uh, has the special design to again uh, high noise in interference. The maximum current is 200 MDC, and also has a diff uh, other type with the 600 MDC. Uh, Ripple free current means through DC. Uh, there is no no ripple on the on the on the current output. Can avoid the false trip. And fully automatic testing can be remote by PC. Also built in with the thermal printer and lightweight uh, sweet case. And the old type is we have MOM 200A and MOM 600A. This is the mechanical product design uh, up to 200 or 600 M can provide uh, measurement up to around uh, 1,999 micro ohm on the MOM 600A with the weight around 14 kg kilo. And now we understand all factor to be considered for testing low resistance measurement. Let's move on to the uh, probe and lead selection. Uh, on this slide, actually, uh, we just showed us some uh, probe that can be used for testing because we know the, the, the lead or probe can be affect to the measurement. The first one is fixed point, where it uh, consists uh, to, to terminal for the fault current and voltage. It's clearly marked for the potential prop with the P letter here. And you can decide this is for the current, make it should be above the potential prop. And the second type is the helical spring point. Mostly you use, you use this for the testing on the battery system to measure the intercell uh, termination. And the other type is Kelvin style leads. And with the connector adapter for con to be connected to the different type of the lid. This is also available on these uh, accessories. And this is also other type of the clamp is C clamp with terminal adapter, cat for so safety rating. And uh, you can use the different type of the cable when you connect to the terminal adapter. And the last one is, I think, on this. Uh, the beauty of all this is we can use the same instrument with the different type of the cable or lead, depend on the application. If you need the testing on the battery system, you, maybe you need the something like a prop, uh, I call spring point. If you need to test make uh, on the circuit breaker, maybe you need a separate uh, connection. We also have the real type like this for testing, uh, like in the wind turbine, because you need to a uh, long cable to connect to the its connection on the wind turbine. Let's go to the application. This is the explanation about the application on the circuit breaker testing, where is a uh, on the DLRO, using a DLRO 10XD, you can connect the current one C1 to the one of terminal on the circuit breaker, the second one to the uh, this terminal. But, and you need to make sure the current uh, prop is above the potential prop like this. And also the breaker must be in close position. So this is the, the exporting result. So we have PowerDB software can import the test measurement 
uh, and then it's more easy for you to for data database so you can compare in the future to the the present result or the with the previous result more easy you just need to press the download dro after you connect to the unit and then you will get the uh, automatically all measurement after you choose which measurement and then we'll transfer to the test form like this uh, this is also application for the secret breaker we can remote the operation with the our software so this i just want to explain more detail about the the ram, ramping ramping test this is very useful for testing the secret breaker yeah you can see this is the start test uh, test start button and this is the re, re dial to choose the the mode operation like uh, normal operation mode sorry uh, normal automatic bidirectional and inductive you can choose from this uh, dial and the second dial is to choose the the current output there are 10m 50m and 100m and also here you can see the the ram ramping uh, uh, mode on this very useful for testing on the secret secret breaker so let's talk about the ramping you see here the the, the current versus on the ramping actually you can see the current versus uh, the time the current applied to the device using the the ramping mode why does need to the ramping current because the, the ramping the test current actually is used to avoid the issue on the CT current transformer, such as a like a magnetization, because sudden inrush of DC current uh, is very critical to avoid any kind of the misoperation, because sometimes if you just uh, inject directly to the certain current, some uh, system can has a has a misoperation. So this is the better if you can use this uh, feature ram the, the current will start from zero to certain value with the ram time duration you can set here on this case we set the one second means from zero to 100 m it will take one one second after that the current will constant and then getting lower with the ram down again Here is other application with the dual ground dual ground testing. Uh, some equipment like a DRO 100 also have this capability. Uh, so high voltage secret breaker that has grounded on both sides, on the line and the load side. And when you try to attempt inject the the current to measure resistance, because the grounding on both sides, the ground current will affect. To the constant resistance measurement so dual ground technology can be used to to do this measurement the current uh, then feedback to the instrument the lro 100 in this case and then we we'll change the and recalculate the the amount of the current that's flowing to the, the circuit breaker let's see the detail of this uh, uh, picture you have the contact circuit breaker here and you have the breaker in uh, both sides grounded and you test with the uh, DRO when you test with connection like this actually there are the two current flowing one segment flow to the ground and one segment flow to the single breaker because this situation you will not get the accurate measurement because the current is not a uh, uh, it's exactly the same as you inject because there, there are there is a separate current from going to ground and going to the breaker with the uh, dual ground method we we measure the current that flowing to the to the ground with the ct clamp and connect to the dro and the current going to ground will uh, read on the this instrument through the ct and then will feedback to the instrument this instrument the arrow will recalculate the current they will sum the current from breaker and the and the 
and the ground and then after recalculate you will get the more accurate uh, and measurement with this method Okay, and I just remember. the other application is in wind turbines. Uh, wind turbine is we need to test on the some application on the lightning protection between wing tip to base and other component part in the manufacturer also to be test because also need the low resistance measurement. But ground bond also need to measure. Uh, with the load system measurement for this application we need the long test lead so long test lead available for this application uh, other the last I think this is the last application on the cable on the cable uh, you can do this for to, to checking bonding and interconnection when installing the equipment and also if you have cable rail you can determine the cable length on the rail after you measure the on with the certain method you can determine the cable length on the reel the oh one more i think this in the motor also can use the low, low resistance measurement uh motor including with the railway traction uh you you can measure this uh on the winding wave winding resistance to detect the source circuit or open circuit and also he tries under under load condition okay let's go the last slide is talking about the summary so low resistance measurement use the four wire method uh, the first one is we use the four wire method the key aspect of this four wire method is that the current lead and potential lead are decoupled from each other you need to remember so to be decoupled each other so you you are eliminating any kind of lead resistance or contact probe resistance we won't eliminate both by ensuring that you, you use the separate lead you need to use the separate lead current probe and separate uh, uh, potential probe to get the uh, accurate measurement the next we also talk about type of application the type of application is going to tell you what kind of the surface you are going to measure so this is very important to understand because it can give effect to the measurement and next is test current magnitude also will impact to the measurement you need to sometime higher current is better but keep in mind you need to see the, the rating of the test measurement not exceed that uh, rating Instrument use also one of consideration. You need to choose the, the right instrument for the certain application, depend on your application. If you just need to testing breaker, I think you don't need to, to use the, the 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 lead with the uh, one uh, enclosure because mostly for the testing breaker you need the uh, permanent connection and you need the separate connection between current and uh, potential pro yeah uh, i think uh, in summary i can say that there are uh, three uh, aspects to, to be considered like a surface type lead selection type and test current type can be impact to the, the measurement yeah i think that's all my presentation Ho hopefully you will get the some useful information for your uh, knowledge uh, and let's uh, maybe we can start for the uh, question uh, michael yes thank you so I... much Amidi, for okay. that very informative uh, presentation so now uh, guys let's go on to the question and answer portion but for those who are leaving early um please do not forget to answer the survey after you close the webinar uh, we have a survey there that could help us improving this uh
So now that's the end of our webinar. If you have any questions, please fill in the question panel now. We'll answer your questions. And yes, for those of you who are leaving, please uh, remember to fill in the survey for our improvement. Uh, a recording of this webinar and a certificate will be sent to your email address in two days' time. And also, in the handout section, you can find our latest industrial maintenance catalog uh, that include all our all, all the megas uh, products for the industrial maintenance and uh, testing. Please feel free to download it for your own use. Also, I will now type into the chat box our email address. If you have any questions after the webinar, you can just drop in an email anytime. Uh, so if there are no further, any further questions, we'll end our webinar here. Thank you, Mr. Mehdi, for your presentation today, and thank you, Michael, for the moderator. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Michael, and everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, okay, okay.